Hi everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be trying out a clear platinum silicone from Smooth-On called Moldstar 20T. I have tried out another Smooth-On platinum silicone before, which was also the Moldstar line, and it's this stuff right here, which is the Moldstar 15. It is this very lovely sea green color. So this is going to be the second brand I've ever tried, though, that is a clear silicone. My go-to platinum silicone is some stuff by Tap Plastics. And it is this stuff right here, and it's definitely clear. It does cost significantly more than the Smooth-On products, though. This is $42 for a 16-ounce kit. And then the Moldstar products tend to be about $38 for a 32-ounce kit. So that's, that's a big difference in price, absolutely. So the last time that I did try Moldstar, which was, you know, this stuff right here, one thing that I was curious about was, is the difference in price going to be a difference in quality? I didn't want to just jump to conclusions about it. So I have used the mold stuff for a while, the mold material, all the molds that I've made with it. And I've decided that there is a difference in the quality. And I'm going to go ahead and show an example of that really quick. So these are some orb molds that I made. I took this little drawer handle pull thing, knocked off the part that would connect to a drawer or what have you, and I make a mold with it. I use this orb shape pretty frequently, and I'm actually going to make a mold of this and a few other things in today's video. So <clears throat> with platinum silicone, it will start to dull after a while. It will start to lose its shine. I don't know if using a mold release helps. I've never used one. I'm just, I'm not 100% on that. But if the piece that you make the mold of is shiny, then the mold, it's going to be shiny as well. So this glass is shiny. This piece that came out of the mold is also shiny. But after a while, as I said, they will start to dull. They will start to come out of the mold. They won't have that same kind of shine and you can probably glaze them. I really don't, I just make more. But this starts to dull significantly quicker than the more expensive stuff. That's where I'm really, really seeing the difference is even though it's cheaper, I'm going through it quicker. So. Is it worth it? I, I don't I don't know. It depends on what you use it for. If it doesn't matter if the mold is shiny or not, I would absolutely go with a cheaper product, like if you're making a soap mold or something like that, and it doesn't matter if there's gonna be a shine, I would stick to the lesser, the more inexpensive stuff. But here's the pieces that came out of here, and you could see, well, I think you can see, I don't know how well that's picking up on the camera, but this piece is, significantly duller than this piece. So that's where I'm really seeing the difference in the quality. So with all that said, um, I, I don't want to make any assumptions about the 20T. I don't know if it's going to react like the 50. I don't know if it's going to be the same. So I'm just going to have to wait and see. But with all of this said, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the directions and breaking down what to do and the pot time and all of that. Get all this out of the way. And just real quick, the projects that we're going to do is I want to do this crystal cluster. I want to make a mold of this. I've never done anything like this before. Hopefully it goes okay. I have this little pyramid, this little stone pyramid. I want to make a mold of that as well. And then, like I said, we're going to do this little glass orb. Oh, okay. So actually, before I start with the directions and all of that, I do want to talk yeah. about why you'd even want to use a clear silicone or like what it's good for. So sometimes you want to see what's going on in the mold. There's like, here's this flower, for example. So you see that there's... There's a lot of nooks and crannies in this. And if you can't see through the mold, it's going to be pretty easy for you to not be able to get all of the resin into all of those little corners. Like with these ones, I'll pour the resin in and I'll work it into those crannies with a toothpick. If you can't see through the mold, then you're most likely not going to be able to get every little area of the mold like you want to. So that's really like a big selling point for me at least is like sometimes you want visibility. Sometimes it doesn't matter though. Sometimes it's just, you're just going to pour the stuff in and it's going to be fine. But when you want to be able to really see in your mold and really make sure that stuff got where you want it to be, you do, well, I like to use a clear product. Okay. So now I will break down what's 
on the bottle, what's in the directions that came with it. Okay, so the mix ratio is one to one by volume or weight. I prefer to do it by volume. If you have a scale, you can absolutely do it by weight. I feel like it's a personal preference. Moldstar 20T is an easy to use platinum silicone that is mixed 1A to 1B, so okay, blah, blah. Pot life is six minutes and cure time is 30 minutes. Store and use at 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 Celsius. All right. Okay, so the pot life being six minutes, I'm curious as to how this is gonna go because if it's not very cool in the room, the pot life will be significantly shorter. With the 20T, the pot life was, or the uh, Moldstar 15 rather, the pot life was supposed to be like half an hour and I feel like I get like 10 minutes max out of it. So I think the room I'm working in is just too warm. I'm curious to see how this is gonna go. That's, I don't feel like that's a lot of time for me to get through that, so we'll, we'll see. Okay, the other side said the same thing. Okay, mm -hmm. stir part A and part B thoroughly before dispensing. I always make sure to do that. And the way I stir that is just, I just have this knife. It's just a metal knife that I put aside for this type of thing. And I'm gonna stir this one and I'm gonna stir that one. I'm gonna mix them together. Okay, Mold Star, we got the 20T. Easy to use, translucent platinum cure silicones. Okay, this is a bunch of other stuff we already read. Okay, they feature a relatively low viscosity and vacuum degassing is not required for most applications. That's handy because I don't think I'm gonna have enough time. Uh, okay, it cures to a soft, strong rubber that is tear resistant and exhibits very long term or very low long term shrinkage. Uh, platinum silicone will definitely shrink over time. I noticed that a lot in my tap plastic molds. Okay, molds made with mold star will last a long time in your mold library and good for casting wax, chips, and resins. Okay, uh huh. Okay, heat resistant up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, 232. Celsius. All right. No, this product will not cure against surfaces containing sulfur even when sealed. So that means that you're going to have to use a specific clay. I'm going to use clay to make my molds. A lot of people use tape. We'll get there and it will make more sense. But the clay I use that doesn't have any sulfur in it is this plastilina. Um, I have noticed with the smooth on stuff that they're not as finicky. They're not as sensitive. I've even had one viewer tell me that she stirs her uh, mold star with a wooden stick, which is supposed to be a big no, no, because there is sulfur in the wood and she says it doesn't even affect it. So this stuff is pretty hardcore. Um, I've even the other product I've used when mixing it was even a little imprecise and it stir still cured very well with this stuff. With the tap plastic stuff, it is so sensitive. It is so, so sensitive. Like you have to be spot on with the measuring. You 100% cannot use anything with sulfur because it will not cure right. This stuff I've noticed is more forgiving in a lot of ways. So it has that going for it. Okay, so pre preparation, properly ventilated area. Okay, uh, wear vinyl gloves only. Latex will inhibit the cure of the rubber because there's sulfur in it. All right, mixing containers should have straight sides and a flat bottom. Pretty standard stuff for this type of thing. Okay, warmer temperatures will drastically reduce working time and cure time. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, where I don't think I'm going to get six minutes out of this. One thing I have been curious about and I would like to try in the future is, you know, well, I don't know if you know, you can warm up resin and it will help when you mix it to uh, get rid of some of the bubbles. I'm wondering if I could actually cool off the silicone um if that would act like give me more working time i don't know i'm not going to try it in this but i think i am going to try it off camera just to see what happens okay addition curd silicone rubber may be inhibited by certain contaminants this is totally what we we're talking about with the sulfur thing Okay, if it's if compatibility is a concern, a small scale test is recommended. That's always just a good call. Okay, to prevent inhibition, one or more coatings of acryl clear acrylic lacquer applied to a model surface is usually effective. Yeah, I like to coat things in spray paint. Um, so I think that would probably be good if I had something that was going to inhibit the cure. I'd probably just hit it with clear spray paint. Even with a sealer, mold star will not cure against surfaces containing sulfur. Like I said, I don't know if it's actually really that sensitive, but I, regardless, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use sulfur stuff with it. 
So stuff about a release agent, it's not necessary, but it'll make demolding easier. All right, all right, all right. Same, it says you can vacuum degas it. We already covered measuring and mixing. Pouring, for best results, pour your mixture in a single spot at the lowest point on the containment field. Our containment fields are gonna be, well, um, I'll hold off on that. Okay, let the rubber seek its own level. A uniform flow will help minimize entrapped air. One thing that I've gotten a comment about, people have been telling me that if you pour your material from much higher up, it will pop a lot of the bubbles if it's like a high thin stream. So I'm gonna try that. I don't know if it's true, I don't know. Like I didn't have problems with bubbles at all when using the Mold Star 15, so that wasn't an issue for me anyways. But regardless, I mean, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, curing, allow rubber to cure as prescribed. Heat curing, you could just speed it along by putting it in a warm room or whatever. Blech. All right, so I think we're ready to go ahead and start to get our mold stuff ready. These are the pieces we're gonna cast. We'll talk about our containment fields and all of that. So let me get that set up and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so what I have here is I have just a glass cutting board and then on it I have some clay. And this is, once again, that clay I was talking about, the plastilina. It is sulfur-free clay, so there's not gonna be any weird inhibition problems with the cure. So I took the clay, I have a clay roller and I'll use it for rolling out thin pieces. This is a thinner piece. And then I have this little, it's like a fondant rolling pin I got at Walmart in the baking section to roll out these bigger pieces. And what I'm gonna be doing with these pieces as I'm gonna be taking my things I wanna mold and I'm gonna stick them into the clay and then I'm gonna put my containment field, apparently is what it's called, I did not know that, uh, around the pieces and that's gonna hold the mold material in and I'm gonna break down the stuff I use here in a little bit. So I'm gonna do this little stone pyramid and I wanna wipe it off first because the platinum silicones and liquid silicones like this are so sensitive that if I left a big fingerprint on there, it would be in the mold and any resin piece that came out of that mold would have that fingerprint. So you wanna make 100% certain that your piece has been cleaned up. There's no fingerprints, no marks, nothing like that. And then I'm just gonna press it into my clay and try to get a really good seal. Some people will use tape for this kind of thing and tape the bottom of your uh, container and all that. I just prefer to use clay and just jam it right in there. So this smaller piece is going to be my little orb door knob handle. And that's another one I'm just gonna jam into the clay. And you really wanna get it in there because it's gonna help have, like when you take all of it apart, it's gonna help you have a very nice clean line. Okay, now with the crystal, I've never done anything like this. I've never done such an odd shape. Now the thing about it is, I would like to have more of this part and less of this part. So what I did was I made a very, very thick layer of clay. And first and foremost, I wanna take my container. This is just a it's a piece of Tupperware I got at the thrift store for like a buck. And then I took a Dremel tool and just cut out the top of it so I could pour into there. Is a little bit crude? Absolutely. Was it inexpensive and does it work? Absolutely. So I'm actually gonna take, cause I kinda cut it close to the edges here. So I wanna just do a little imprint real quick. So I understand my parameters of where I should be setting this crystal. I wanna try and cut a little space under it. So I wanna get the basic imprint of what's going on. I've never done this before. I don't know if this is gonna, if this is gonna work out or if it was a bad idea. Stay tuned. But I think, I feel like I should, see that's how thick that clay is. I feel like I should be able to like, yeah, I think that might be good. And I'm just gonna... Cool, yeah, I think that'll work. All right, so now that I have that one situated, I'm gonna take my little container thing, I'm gonna put it around it, and I'm gonna squeeze it into the clay. I do not have to go all the way to the end of the clay, I just have to do it enough to ensure there's a good seal. 
And even if it doesn't make a perfect seal on one of the sides, I've noticed it doesn't mean that all the mold material is gonna come pouring out. Some will kind of gather along the side, but it's not like, bleh, you know, it's not just gonna go everywhere. So that's my setup for that. So with the pyramid, I have this little cup and it was one of these cups that I bought for measuring resin. I'm not sure about their accuracy with resin. Um, I haven't tried it, it's not really relevant. So what I did was I took an X-Acto knife and I cut the cup, you know, got it started and then you could take scissors to it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough to squeeze into the clay. So I cut off part of the cup and then I took an X-Acto knife and I just cut a hole out of the cup the way that I did cut the hole out of this thing with the Dremel. I'm going to position it around and then I'm going to push the cup into that clay and get a nice seal going on there. So that one's good to go now too. Now with this little orb piece, I'm just gonna use some cutters. I use the cutters more than anything because I make small pieces. Even this rose piece, it was made by putting a rose in the clay, putting a cutter around it and filling the mold material into it. A cutter. And as I said earlier, for thinner pieces like this, I'll just use a clay roller. It looks like a pasta roller, pretty much. It's for polymer clay. I'll leave a link for that. And everything relevant that I can leave a link for um, in the description area below. Okay, I'm gonna call that step complete. So now I'm gonna get set up and we're gonna move on to the mixing and the measuring. All right, so the container that I'm gonna be using is this plastic measuring cup. I got it at the dollar store for like a buck. I like it. It has nice, thin, clear lines that you can see. So I think I'm just going to go all the way up to the two cup line. I've gotten questions before, like how do you know how much mold material to mix up? One way that you can do it is you can take rice and if I, I don't have any rice right now, but if I did, you could take rice, you could pour it into there and then empty out the rice and then measure that. And then it'll give you the basic idea of how much to use. I actually did that with resin recently in a tutorial I did with stone coat epoxy making a Batman serving tray. So if you'd like to see that concept in action, go ahead and go check that out. So I already took off the little little foil seal that this had. And with this stuff, you're supposed to mix it up before you even pour it together and mix it up. So I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm gonna stir in there. I'm really just gonna get the bottom, and get the corners. So this is what our product is looking like. So now that I have the part A mixed up, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into my measuring cup. I'm gonna pour it to the one cup line. That thickness isn't bad at all. The uh, other clear silicone I used is a little bit thinner. All right, so there is that. And I'm going to mix up the part B and then pour it in and then we're gonna get ready to mix it all up. And I'm going to try and work as quickly as possible because I'm really concerned about the pot life. All right, now I'm gonna add my side B. Okay, now I'm gonna mix it up and I'm gonna get ready to pour it. I'm trying to not incorporate Erin and I'm also trying to not take my sweet time with this. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, I think it's been like two minutes and I think it's probably about time to pour it. I hope it's stirred up enough. All right, I'm gonna let that settle in and then, oh yeah, that's already thickening up so much. All right, now I'm gonna move on. All 
Uh, I don't think I'm going to have enough for the for the little orb. So I'm going to mix some up off camera. And I do think I actually want to try the thing I was talking about where I cool off the product. And I think I'm just going to measure some in a cup and hold it in like a cool water bath and see how that works out. But that's cool. Okay, there was enough for the crystal, so that's good. Oh my gosh, look at how much this is already thickening up. Ah, and it's been it's been almost five minutes. Dude, that was intense. Alright, um, cool. Okay, so I'm going to do just a little bit. I'm going to scrape some more out. I'm going to make a bigger mess. Oh yeah, that is thickening up a lot. Okay, I'm going to quit messing around with that. So yeah, for the orb, I'm just going to, oh, okay. Um, I'm just going to mix up a little bit, put it in cold water bath, see how much time I get out of it. Okay, so it's been about an hour. I worked on the orb mold and I feel like it worked really well. And all I did was I took a little measuring cup, measured out some silicone, and then I put some water into this little container and I dropped an ice cube in there and just set the little cup in there and mixed it that way and cooled off the product. I do feel like I got a longer work time out of it. In all fairness, it was a smaller amount. Um, yeah, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and move on to these. I did not mix it enough. I know that's what happened. I just did not have enough time. So just touching it, like some parts are very, very firm and that's all good and well. Some are not. Some are super squishy and it's because I just, I didn't mix it enough. I was concerned about that. In the other review I have, the demo and review of the other Moldstar product, one of my viewers said he likes to take a drill and like actually mix it up with a drill. I now completely understand why. I just, I didn't have enough time. So I'm, let's, let's see what we got here. Okay. Okay, so with this one, I'm just going to start to go around the edges and break that seal. There we go. Yeah. All right. Okay. Alright, so this is what the mold itself looks like. The only squishy part I'm really finding is right there. But let's see what we got here. Okay. So that's what the inside's looking like. It pulled off some debris from the crystal. Okay. So now we can move on to the pyramid. Nope. And this I could probably just cut out with scissors. All right. So this is what our pyramid mold is looking like. Even though, like there's a ton of bubbles, I could understand why you would want to put this one through a vacuum chamber. I still just feel like you don't really have enough time to do it. Um, even though it's translucent, like it's supposed to be a clear one, I, I wouldn't really say that you can see through it. So just on that, like, I don't see why you would use this over like the Mold Star 15, which is that sea green color. Maybe the quality is a little bit better. I have no idea. Okay, so this one is the little orb. And I think if I used this stuff again, I would cool it off like that again. It didn't inhibit the curing in any way. It is a nice firm cure. It doesn't have soft spots like the one I did not mix up enough. So yeah. Okay then. I guess these are no longer necessary.
Okay. So that's what this one's looking like. Um, comparing it to my other mold material, then this piece has been used countless times. This one is brand new. Uh, yeah, this one is just a lot clearer. The product is thinner, so it's not really surprising. Cool, okay, and now just for fun, before I say my goodbyes and close out the video, I wanna use the molds and I'm just gonna mix up some uh, Mountain Pour soap real quick, pour it in there, wait a few minutes, and then we can pop it out and actually see what these look like. So I'm gonna do that. Yeah, it, it feels soft and sticky in places. I just, I didn't mix it enough. I did not have enough time to mix it enough. Regardless, I'm gonna mix up some soap. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I mixed up some soap and I poured it into the mold. So we're gonna pop it out and see what these actually look like and then I'll kind of sort through my final thoughts. So we're gonna start with a pyramid. That looks nice. There's some holes in it, but I think it's holes in the soap and not necessarily the mold itself. Let's see what we got here. Okay, I did this one once already. And the reason was is that there's a lot of bubbles in the soap. And I was curious, like maybe it was the soap itself, but I put a bunch of rubbing alcohol in it. I did soap related things that make bubbles like that go away. Um, so I think it's the mold. I think all of those bubbles might actually be, do you see what I'm talking about? the mold itself. And while this is all right, you know, it's pretty true to where it came from. Um, I don't know. I think the bubbles might, it might have to do with needing to use a vacuum chamber. Okay. So I think the big question is, would I buy this product again? No, I wouldn't buy this product again. And there's a few reasons why. So, I just don't understand why you would want a product that thickens up that quickly. You know what I mean? Like I'm sure there's applications for it. I just don't know what they are. I would rather use a product that doesn't cure as quickly. And the thing about it is like the translucence is really what sold me on it. I thought that you would be able to see through it a lot better. And I just don't really think that the visibility I want is there. Like I had might as well use this stuff instead of this stuff if, you know, I can see through them about the same. I'm just going to stick with my clear silicone that I already use. See, here is that thinner silicone that I normally use. This is a brand new mold. Look at how well you can see through that as opposed to these. Like even when you get close in the corners, like the visibility just is not there with it. And I feel like, yeah, you could totally get there with the vacuum chamber, but how on earth are you gonna mix it up properly and get it into a vacuum chamber and get all of the bubbles out? I'm, I'm sure it's a thing, I just couldn't do it personally. So yeah, I think I would, I'll stick to the Mold Star, I'll stick to my other clear product, and this I'm just gonna pass on. Uh, I totally messed it up. I didn't have enough time to stir it like I should have. It's just, it wasn't a good experience. So on that note, um, I guess I covered everything I wanted to. Thank you for bearing with me. Sorry, I did not do this right. I, it's not surprising. I don't know. The quarantine just has me feeling some kind of way at this point. So if you made it to the end, I genuinely appreciate you watching and I hope you're holding up in all of this. I think I am. I don't know. But um, yeah, I just want to say I appreciate you. So thank you for watching and have a great day.